So up, up until this point we've been examining problems which have a couple of different stages or a couple of different events involved. For instance, we've had a look at what happens when you throw a coin, when you flip a coin twice, and we've been asked to find what's the probability of getting two heads or two tails or at least one tail. Uh, but so far we, we haven't yet been able to calculate what happens when there are different ways of getting a particular result from an experiment. For instance, imagine that, uh, imagine that instead of finding the probability of two heads, we're asked to find the probability of getting one head and one tail. So these are slightly different questions um, for a significant reason. Here there's only one way of getting two heads if you flip a coin twice. It means on the first flip you get a head and on a second flip you get, you get a head. Whereas if we're asked to find the probability of getting one head and one tail, there are two different ways that we could, we could get this result. We could flip a head on the first flip and a tail on the second flip, or alternatively we could flip a tail on the first flip and a head on the second flip. And so, so far we're good, at, we're good at understanding how to solve problems of this type, but when there are multiple events that cover our condition, we haven't yet figured out a system by which we can figure, we, we, can, we can determine what the probability is. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to be looking at probability tree diagrams. We're going to consider a question where we might have an unfair coin and a fair coin. So this unfair coin here has a U on it, this fair coin has an F. So imagine that I give you an unfair coin. This means that if you flip the coin, instead of 50% of the time it comes up heads, 50% of the time it comes up tails. Here we're going to suppose that it comes up heads with probability 3 out of 5, and it comes up tails with probability 2 out of 5. So it's unfairly weighted towards heads. Whereas for the fair coin, we're going to suppose that as usual the probability of heads is a half, and the probability of tails is a half. And imagine I said to you that what we're going to do is we're going to uh, toss, we're going to go through a process. The process is process is we're going to first of all toss the unfair coin, toss the unfair coin, and we're going to get a result and we're going to record that result. And then once we've recorded that result, we're going to toss the fair coin. Toss the fair coin. And we've been asked to calculate the probability of getting one head and one tail. And again, let's remember that very similar to this question that we were, we were looking at up here, there are two ways to get one head and a tail. You get a head then a tail, or you can get a tail then a head, and both of those are going to be covered by this particular condition. So the best way to do this is to draw a probability tree. So a probability tree, what we do is we, we draw a few branches, and these branches come out from a particular point. So let's draw a point here, and then imagine we have a branch coming out here and a branch coming out here. And these two branches represent, we, we've drawn two branches because there are two outcomes from our, our first part of the process, which is tossing the unfair coin. And there are two different outcomes. We could get a head or a tail. So we're, we're, from each of these branches, we're going to draw the outcome at the end of those branches. And on each branch, we're going to ascribe the probability of each one of these outcomes happening. So here it's three-fifths and here it's two-fifths. So probability of getting heads with three-fifths, probability of getting tails is two-fifths. Now after we've gotten to this, suppose we, we flipped our coin and our unfair coin and the first time we've got heads, well from that we're going to then have two more possibilities, two more possible outcomes. The first one could be throwing, flipping a heads on the fair coin, because after we toss the unfair coin, we toss the fair coin, or we could get a tails when we toss the fair coin. What's the probability that, given that we've got heads on the first toss of this unfair coin, what's the probability that we get heads once we've tossed the fair coin? Well, here it's going to be half and half on each one of these branches because it's a fair coin. Similarly, if we toss uh, uh, the unfair coin and get tails, we're going to have two outcomes that could come after that. That's going to be heads and tails again on this second coin, this fair coin. And once, once we've tossed uh, this unfair coin and, got, and, and we've, we've seen that we've got tails, 
there's uh, there's a probability of half that will get heads on the fair coin, and probably that will get half probability of half that will get tails on the fair coin. So this is a probability tree diagram. And what's nice about this diagram is once uh, once we've got these outcomes on the very right hand side, what we can do is we can represent them. We can say, oh, well, well this outcome represents getting heads on the first flip and heads on the second flip. This outcome is heads on the first flip and tails on the second flip. Here, this is heads, this is, sorry, this is tails on the first flip and heads on the second flip. This is tails on the first flip and tails on the second flip. And in order to calculate the probabilities, all we need to do is multiply the probabilities on each one of these branches for any particular outcome. So for instance, the probability here of getting heads and then heads is calculated by multiplying three-fifths, which is the probability associated with this branch, three-fifths, we multiply that by one-half, because one-half is the probability ascribed to this branch. So here, let's make this clear. I'll do this in red. So what we've got is we've got heads on the first flip, which is here, and then we've got heads on this second flip as well. So consequently, we're going to multiply this probability with this probability. And consequently, we're going to get some outcome there. If we multiply through, that's going to be 3 over 10. Okay, what about the probability of getting a head then a tail? Well, here that's going to be 3 fifths times a half, exactly the same as what we had before. That's because we're going to multiply this first branch leading to heads by the second branch that leads from heads to tails. So here it's going to be 3 fifths times a half. And that's going to be the same as what we've got above, which is 3 tenths about the probability of getting of, of flipping tails and then flipping heads. Well here it's going to be two-fifths because that's associated with tails, so we're going to write two-fifths associated with tails on the first flip multiplied by a half. If we multiply through that's going to be two-tenths. Whereas the probability of getting tails and tails, that's well, going to be two-fifths times a half. Exactly the same as what we've got above. So this is going to be 2 tenths. So the question is, what is the probability of getting one head and one tail? Well, there are two possible ways of getting a head and a tail. We could get a head on the first flip and a tail on the second flip, or a tail on the first flip and a head on the second flip. So we apply our addition rule here, and we say the probability of getting one head and one tail is the probability of a head then a tail, plus the probability of a tail then a head. We do this because these are the only two ways that we get one head and one tail. So if we substitute these values in here, we get probability of head, head and then a tail is 3 tenths. So this is 3 tenths plus the probability of a tail then a head. So that's 2 tenths. So 3, three tenths plus 2 tenths is 5 tenths. Another way of writing that is a half. So the probability of getting one head and one tail in this, this process, from this process, is a half. So probability diagrams are fantastic for these sort of problems and other sort of problems where you have multi-stage events and you're asked to find some condition where there's not a, a single result associated with this condition. There are multiple results associated with the condition. And what's great about the probability tree diagram as well is that it combines both our addition rule and our multiplication rule when it comes to probability. So we're multiplying probabilities along the branches to get specific probabilities associated with results, but then we can then add those probabilities of results in order to find the probability of a certain condition occurring, and that condition may have more than one event associated with it. And that's probability tree diagrams.